All right. It says now we are being live streamed. Got it. Got it. Get it. Good. Welcome, everyone, to The Word is Right. I'm so excited to be here tonight. I'm your host, Marissa Prada. Uh, so, so excited for our double features tonight. I don't know if you can see in their book ending me right now. In fact, like, watch. I'm going to take a picture of this because I get to be bookended by Nemo and Rich. Uh, it may not look like it on your screen, but on my screen, I'm sandwiched in between the two of them. <laughs> And that's pretty cool. Uh, all right, so tonight's double feature we have from Albuquerque, New Mexico, Rich Boucher. And uh, from North Carolina, we have Nemo Sum. North Carolina, right, Nemo? Uh, okay, cool. Uh, so very, very excited to have you all here tonight. All right, Mark states, I got you, Mark, uh, for the open mic. And uh, if you put your name in the list and I missed it, uh, please uh, don't hate me. Uh, there's a lot happening, right? I got the features, I got the list, I got the chat. I got all my stuff happening back here. So sometimes it happens that I miss someone and it's not intentional. I promise I will remedy that by getting you on the list tonight. All right, so some ground rules for this evening. Uh, we have a good little list going. So I'm gonna say uh, up to five minutes max for the open mic, please do not take longer than that. Uh, if you would, um, if you would like to read and you have not gotten on the list, please let me know. I'll get you on the list. Our, normally the way we run this show is we'll go like 15, 20 minutes on the open mic and bring up fe feature number one. Then we'll go back to the open mic list for 15 to 20 minutes and bring up feature number two. And then we'll go back to the open mic list and finish. <clears throat> well, tonight is a very special show. Rich and Nemo have come together to deliver one big 40 minute, up to 40 minute production. And so it's gonna be an incredible show, right? <laughs> uh, so we're gonna go ahead and do a large chunk of the open mic list <laughs> to try uh, and at least get, <clears throat> excuse me, everyone uh, who is here earlier on time, get them up to the mic as, as quickly as possible. And then we're gonna bring up our features uh, to deliver the, the middle meaty part of our show. Uh, this tends to be a show where people trickle in in the second hour and then they get on the list, right? And, and it continues to go. So I fully anticipate there being an open mic list as we uh, as we wind into the second hour and we finish up with our featured readers tonight. Welcome, Billy. Welcome, everyone, to The Word is Right for our double feature event tonight. All right, some quick announcements. <clears throat> um, the schedule, so we have coming up here in April, the first Saturday, for those who are not familiar with The Word is Right, we have a show pretty much every day of the week, either a show, an open mic, or a workshop, something happening every day. We do have slots open for um, either coaches, for open mic hosts, for show hosts, for workshop hosts. If you're interested in doing a regular thing here, let us know. Uh, we do collaborate with many different artistic platforms as well. So um, the first Saturday of the month is our movie night. So next Saturday, we'll have a movie night. And we're doing 1980s Tom Hanks. Uh, we try not to pick anything mainstream or current. Uh, I like picking things that I liked growing up and things that, well, that I like, because I got to sit there through the movies. Uh, we do hope you like them as well. Uh, April 8th is, uh, Saturday, April 8th is a very big day. If you could please do us the honor and mark your calendars. It is the book release for American Graveyard, Calls to End Gun Violence. I just posted a live today unboxing these incredible books. Coach Josh Smalls is in the room. He and I uh, collaborated on the cover art for this book. It's 200 pages, 67 contributors, um, all about uh, calls to end gun violence, poetry, prose, haikus. Uh, it's an incredible book. And then to accompany it, separately is American Graveyard Art Book. Cover art is by Ella Diem. Um, this is all through my press, uh, Red or Green Books, uh, Red, R-E-A-D, because we live in New Mexico and everything is red or green chili, but spelled R-E-A-D, poetic license, right? So uh, the books are on sale now. Uh, there are limited copies of the original order, so you need to, if you want to secure your copy soon, you've got to get uh, to redergreenbooks.com and do that. The 200-page uh, art book is only $25. I mean, it is full of some of the most amazing poetic voices in the in our country right now, but it's people from all over the world. And then the art book is 50 pages, full color, uh, gloss pages. It is just a wonderful book accompanied with poetry 
and that is only $20. You can get them together. But the reason we're pushing that is because we are sponsoring these books to go to U.S. state senators, with our goal being that every single U.S. state senator have a copy of American Graveyard. So a lot of things are happening uh, with that. Uh, coming up in April, we have Pam Rice and Bram. Bram is in the room tonight and Pam Rice is in the room tonight. So, so exciting. The two of you will get to kind of see each other's work, hopefully. The two of them will be double featuring April 15th. We have Stacey Dyson and Diosa featuring on the 22nd. And Terry Rose Dirtson, welcome to, to The Word is Right. She's going to be doing karaoke night the last Saturday of the month. So if you want karaoke, come here the last Saturday of the month. We're also welcoming Special K, who is going to be doing uh, a show the first and third Tuesday night of the month. And Coach Joss Smalls now is here at The Word is Right, and he's going to be doing a special writing workshop on the first and third Wednesday night of the month. So awesome. Lots and lots of things happening here at The Word is Right. Uh, and so we're going to get going with that. Last but not least, September 8th, 9th, and 10th is our New Mexico Poetry Summit here in Albuquerque. If you have not traveled to the Southwest, you haven't been to New Mexico, yes, we are part of the country. No, you do not need to have a passport. We speak English. Uh, and <laughs> these are all myths uh, from the East Coast, okay? Not, not judging, but I'm just saying. Uh, we are part of the United States. Get down here, it is so much fun. We already have uh, 15 people uh, signed up to read and, and do workshops here. It's gonna be a Friday, Saturday, Sunday event. All the information is on the website, redorgreenbooks.com. All right, so uh, we're going to get going with the show. Uh, let's see, it's 6.20 my time. Let's, uh, we'll go through the list. I'll try to get everyone up through Mark States. If anyone uh, did not get on the list who would like to read, uh, please drop your name in the chat or send me a direct message. And that flags me a little red uh, note that says you sent me something and I can go back if I missed it. I will get you on the list. And then we'll bring up our double features tonight and all that wonderful stuff. I promised Rich that I would read him because he said one of his favorite bands is the Rolling Stones. And I have this wonderful Rolling Stones uh, poem that is in my second book. And it is titled, of course, Paint It Black. So let me scroll to it. Of course, I would not be prepared and have it tagged right, or flagged. Ah, oh, here it is. Uh, there's over a hundred Rolling Stones titles in this book. I mean, excuse me, in this poem. So here we go. Uh, after me will be Christopher Moore and then Coach Josh Smalls, you are uh, in the hole, <laughs> in the hole. Give me shelter from the love in vain I wait in vain for. Around and around, I am a fool to cry these faraway eyes, for this out of time clock will not fade away. Only cry to me for an emotional rescue. So worried about you and your heart of stone. Give me shelter from these torn and frayed days. You drift away, gotta get away. Can't take the flight 505, cause our deep love don't stop. And somehow that's not what you want. So paint it black, paint it all back in the aftermath of you. Sweet black angel, hand of fate, tumbling dice, loving cup of brown sugar satisfaction, prodigal son, street fighting sensei man, still time is on my side to ride on baby, shine a light on then paint it black. Let's spend the night together, then paint it black. I want to be loved back, then paint it black. You'll be waiting on a friend, dead flowers in your hand, dandelion connection like a rolling stone, headstone, goodbye girl, letter in hand, monkey man. Twist the towel of fate and let it bleed black. My life spent finding you, just you fool, then paint it black. Paint it all back in time. When the whip comes down, wild horses will play with fire under cover of the night. Don't cry for this child of the moon, honky tonk woman. She's a rainbow, was a rainbow. Midnight rambler walking a moonlit mile. Solo journey of no expectations under my thumb. 
just before they make me run saying it's only rock and roll anyway so go find you a factory girl backstreet girl all about you girl she was hot enough to rip this joint connection some girls let it loose a little tna store me in your memory motel high and dry just the way you left me for i'm all sold out of scrap scribbles used to immortalize you from my imagination i don't know why i can't quit you break the spell of you ruby tuesday revolution rough justice rodeo clowning jigsaw puzzle of its complicated star star fall fall shatter this 19th nervous breakdown beast of burden on ventilator blues how can i stop when time waits for no one like i am waiting for you can't always get what you want when i love another and know it should be you have, having forgotten this low-down luxury of love to paint it black, paint it all back. This is the last time I will ever miss you, miss you, miss you, tired of the misuse, misuse of my time, misuse of my love, misuse of my mind to find any more words for you. I'm moving on if you let me. It's not easy to paint it black, paint it all back, but I gotta go. Let me go, let us go. See you all down the line, sister morphine slave. She's so cold, but I'm going home to happy heaven. Can't you hear me knocking? It's all over now. I'm free for when the pale horse comes, you'll see. That's how strong my love is, baby. Give me shelter to paint it all away. Poem. Let's go! Let's go tonight! Welcome everyone to The Word is Right. Hope that mic is nice and warmed up for you now. Um, uh, so those who are just joining us, if you'd like to get on the open mic list tonight, send me a message and I'll get you on the list. Uh, we are recording this and live streaming, so if you don't want to be recorded, please give your camera off and yourself muted. But feel free to clap in between performances. We're going to go a little bit on the open mic and bring up our double features this evening. Christopher Moore, are you ready? Yeah, I am. Uh, although following that, I don't know how I'm going to follow that. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, I'll bring up my document here, poems. <clears throat> okay, I'll read a few. This is called Alice in Pennsylvania. Screw tea parties. If we don't get our iced coffee, we're all going to be mad here. Here's a riddle for you. What is real lives in ignorance? Off with their heads if their individuality always goes against what the backwards collective always thinks. If you try asking questions for answers, then you already fallen too far down this rabbit hole. <clears throat> and the next one I will read is called um, Ruby Hearts. <clears throat> Diamonds are not a girl's best friend. I was told to follow that yellow brick road, foolishly thinking that it would lead to happiness. The road got longer as the years went by, picking up hitchhikers on occasion who got confused as to why my heart was granite. No rest for the weary, it seemed, when the hitchhikers found alternate routes to leave while I stuck on a path of lies for an end goal I would truly never make. I seemed to always trek onward, even though no thumps ever came from my chest. <clears throat> Do I have time for one more, Marissa? Let's go, Christopher. Yeah, totally. Do one. Okay. Uh, bring the document back up, and let's see. Okay, so if you haven't guessed, um, this is from a new manuscript I'm working on, and it has like a personal poem slash wonderland theme. So there's a lot of references to that. So this one is called The Mad Hatter's Bar. One glass, one shot, one tap will eventually get you mad as a hatter. Up is down and down is up. So leave all logical thinking by the door. Screw all egg-headed intellectuals. Did you hear the latest gossip from the queen? 
To be blood honest, though, do we really care? It's your choice not to guzzle down or take a shot of beer, but you'd realize then that we're all mad here. Thank you. Yes, yes, and I love the theme of of your book. Uh, yes, we're all a little mad here, right? <laughs> yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it's called um, North and Wonderland. I'm mixing personal poems with that sort of wonderland theme. Awesome. I'm so glad that you're here. Uh, okay, post Sophia Falco, I got you. Yes, you must use all three of her names. And I know that made her smile, so that made me happy. All right, Coach Josh Smalls is out of the hole. <laughs> and he is on the mic. Uh, we got Eddie Foreman, followed by Jenner Lee Simone. Um, G, you're in the hole. All right, cool. I'm going to jump right in so I can get these two poems in. First one is called Fairy Tales. This morning, my daughter and I watched Disney for the 10,000th time. Our family room smiled as melodies tumbled from left to right brain. Every song caramel coated across our vibrating voices. You know, children have a way to define happy. With blaring arms and high-pitched screams can change a room from quiet time to a wonderland of song and dance. Well, I've not known happy all my days. Growing up, New York City meant having to fit into someone else's idea, and if I'm honest, hope never found me easy. My gift made hiding possible, so I speak in fig leaves. Hide my innermost self before walking in someone else's speech. I camouflage my indifference because, well, that makes me feel safe. You see, it's cozy being invisible painting a rainbow on my skin so no one can see the blues bouncing beneath my shadows. The difference in being different means having to stand on your own. No safety harness to catch you when you fall. I've learned a wounded knee only grants more time for asking God's hands. So I ask him often, and I know what it feels like being lonely, standing before a crowd and still feeling invisible. You know, as a child, I left, left school knowing no one wants to be my partner. You see, this gift may pay bills, but it rarely gives comfort. When I was 12, Promise found my address, pledged me an offer the same night a shooting star claimed the dark sky. I begged for truth to dress me worthy, but inside, I already saw it had fragments. So I covered it shattering like a twisted elbow. I already knew the facts. Watch truth spin me two steps in the wrong direction. See, I've always been a fan of Disney because there are goblins and fairy tales that somehow give us all hope. And whether it's the whiz or a giant panda making puberty more than a handful of emotions, sometimes, sometimes a glance in the mirror shows a hint of the quiet beast inside of our own hearts. And sometimes the greatest blessings come by simply believing in ourselves because, well, sometimes we're the only heroes that we ever need. Let's go, Joa. Let's go. Do, do I have room for the other one? Of course. Okay. For as long as I could remember, music always taught us history. It seems like liberation from bad times found a melody to sweet our palate. So we'd sing and dance just like the old folks with swinging arms and snapping fingers, voices calling better tomorrows to find us a new day. Those songs spoke of a better you, a better me, a change package in a soulful voice like praying hands on a religious ceremony, perhaps. Perhaps that's how we find our futures. Blanket our past in a bowl of cultivation and shaping what we already know. I bet it smells like delight. And it sounds like children playing on the front lawn. Must sound like freedom bells and the creator's footsteps finding our family room. Sometimes everything we need is already present. Sitting on the tip of our tongues, rounding the pitter patter of our eardrums. If we're if we're in this love together, then I vow to make you my ride or die. Praise 
one million hallelujahs knowing I will always see you in my mirror. So stand by me. Let's heal this world and get up, stand up. We are heading for self-destruction. So gather these saints who have fallen. Let us take them to the king. I know brighter days have our names trimmed in gold and thin sheets of paper like scripture sculpted or handcrafted in the man's chosen words. There are no farewells is where I come from. Only thank you signs and welcome mats. Your duty lies beneath the starlit skies and early morning sunrise. So let the music play on for I am still in love with you. And whether we're love overboard or checking out a melody, I've got a future with you. And that, well, that is what I call beautiful music. Thank you. Oh, let's go. Give it up for Coach Josh Smalls, please. Whew. Um, they're giving it up behind their microphones. I promise. <laughs> amazing. Amazing. Uh, I, I think you have beat, beat out butter for smoothness. <laughs> yes. For those who don't know, uh, Coach Josh Smalls was um, nominated for the Poet Laureate of Charlotte. North Carolina last year. Uh, he's very well deserving of that and it's coming his way. Uh, we are super excited uh, that he's here and that he's part of Word is Right now. Uh, he wrote the foreword for American Graveyard. Uh, his, his, it's a real life story that he puts in the foreword uh, talking about being a victim of gun violence. So, uh, you know, it's, we don't realize the amount of gems and history and knowledge and experience that are in our community. But when we dig into it, right, we we tap into each other. Uh, there's nothing we can't do uh, together. And Jaws is, is the epitome of that, right? He's like me, he works a lot with guerrilla poets. He has his penmanship, uh, he has his books, all of that stuff. He's featured here multiple times that the word is right. Um, and uh, we're so excited just that he's here now as a host, the first and third Wednesday of, of the the month. He's gonna do a writing thing. You're like you don't want to miss that, and that's free, y'all. That's free. Like, get with it and get your butts here to Word Is Right. There's invaluable resources here for everyone. All right, we got Eddie, the fireman foreman. Eddie is a uh, part of our Word Is Right family. He helps me host uh, Moist Mondays, the second and fourth Monday night of the month. And he also does, um, he's my tech guru for movie nights. We're super excited. We could not do it without him. And then after Eddie will be Generalissimo. Woo, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. I am touch. And thanks a bunch. Hello, everyone. My name is Ed Potastic. I'm feeling fantastic. Please give me a time to draw my rhyme for Aqua Sublime. I got two pieces, so you know the rhyme. The first chime is called Sorry Not Sorry. My mouth remains closed. I can't easily forgive. Yes, I'm closed like a stone. Why should you have an easy life to live? Some closed minds don't get fed. Why should I apologize to you? My heart is full of lead. Heart lessons stick like glue. I know rage makes you sink, a rock drowning without end. Let's hold up, stop, and think. This feeling separates our enemies and friends. Every time I say I'm sorry, I bite my tongue. You don't deserve no sympathy. Oh, the monster I've become. You hurt me, you hurt me without any thought or mind. Why should I give you forgiveness? No, everything's not all right or fine. Why should I give why should I give you bliss? Jesus turned the other cheek. Yes, but I'm not that guy. Jesus was murdered being a freak. It's on the Bible. I tell no lies. I'm sorry, not sorry. I can't apologize. I can't give you glory. There's no sympathy in your eyes. Does apologizing make you feel better? Does it really make you feel good? It's not going to suddenly my weather. I know, but I deeply wish I could. Where, where were you when I created rain? Where were you when I was empty? Where were you against the pain? Where is your heartfelt empathy? I understand saying sorry makes me a better man. Too bad I surely don't fucking care. You never offer me an ear or a hand. You were never fucking there. Please, just stay the fuck away from me. You do more harm than good. You're a beacon of my deep, dark misery. Yes, leave me being completely misunderstood. Thank you. Um, Damn, other... Eddie, let's go. I just got to give him a little bit of props because I didn't see that coming. Slap. 
Thank you, thank you, thank you. Woo! Thank you, our wonderful queen, looking so supreme on the scenes. Um, this is this poem is going to have well, <clears throat> this poem is going to have mommy, dad, and language. So many different stages. So please mind the word for these pages. I just want to burn some cages. All right, this is called "Blooming Sex Bomb." I remember your soft, silky figure. You had the winter strawberries. My trigger has gotten much bigger. My desire was off in the varies. Had a brain lust to feed. Had a desire to ignite our needs. Had unquenchable hunger to dance and breed. Then all his senses couldn't subside or take heed. I want to taste my tongue on your tongue. Let a whisper of moans flow into the air. Let the burning passion sizzle our lungs. Come on, let's dance till we're both exposed and bare. You wind those soft legs without delay. Your pink softness was so inviting. I did some oral repetitive wordplay. Your actions were blazing intoxicating and exciting you could crack stone over your moans you know how to keep up a tune i'm sizzling your sweet skin and pale bones it will howl at the milky moon you dropped and dropped when you go on top your soft pink walls caressed my thing i didn't want my cherry bomb to stop we listened to our high-pitched vocals sing our loins cried while our lungs expand our red sensational river overflowed time chained to sand I couldn't forget how your beauty glowed. The open spaces are quickly sealed. Our hearts are overflowing with desires. The bare moments we couldn't reveal. Our crimson blood was pulsing with fire. I was absorbed by the deep black abyss. I was pushing beneath the pink mode. I couldn't resist the pink mist. You were wild, untamed, and uncontrolled. We had short breaths going through our lips. Your movement started matching mine. After the sensation for our nips and fingertips, we felt the synchronized embers up our spines. Our bodies were lost in the blazing domain. It was chest to chest colliding head on. The rapid restraint we had to maintain inside our brains. We grew all night long and strong. We cried one big music with no satisfaction. It seems our phone has died down. The end of our lustful chain reaction. We were exhausted, but we didn't frown. The light creeping into the shadows. Our heads were high in, in, sorry, our heads were hidden underneath the sheets. The dear darkness slowly closes, the sunlight kissing our feet. Thank you. <laughs> let's go, let's go at Poetastic, making everyone feel fantastic. Uh, let's go, yeah, right, the rhyme scheme, Ja, uh, it's just awesome. It's impossible not to be happy around you. Thank you so much for being here. All right, next up we got Generalissimo Brian Franco. Um, and Urban Cowboy Poet, but both of these gentlemen are published through Red or Green Book, so I'm super excited that they keep coming back and sharing their wonderful work. Generally, Simo's poetry has been um, selected a lot lately to be included in different publications. So we're, we're very, very happy about that for him. Uh, let's see, are you ready, G? Yeah, but I think I would like, I'd like to spend uh, a few weeks in Mexico every year. That'd be fun, but, but that's, yeah. that's UCP's job. Um, <laughs> Eddie always makes me happy too. I just have to say that there's there's nothing but happiness when Eddie get when when Eddie get starts reading. So two poems um, because Musa did that Rolling uh, Stones thing. These are both mu about music. The first really old piece I used to slam with called Tina Turner. Why did you murder me? When I was eighteen, I dreamed I sailed solo around the world. At the end of my journey, I stepped off my boat onto a long pier that emptied onto the cobblestone streets of a New England fishing town. There were as many people there as were at Woodstock. Although I could not see you, I heard your voice as you sang your siren song. I be your private dancer. I dance up for money. I do anything you want me to do. I'll be your private dancer. I dance up for money. Any old music will do. Then you made an announcement. There's an old friend of mine out there. I'd really love to say hello to. Then you said my name. When I was 18, a freshman in college, I turned on the TV to MTV, and there you were, a statuesque golden goddess in a leather miniskirt, net stockings, and those forever perfect legs, insured by Lloyds of London for two million bucks. You sang Let's Stay Together and converted the Reverend Al Green's anthem of true love and intimacy into an orgy of sensuality and lust. I raced to the record store and danced with the private dancer. And I am ashamed to say I had no idea who Tina Turner was. I didn't know you were a rock and roll and soul music icon. Yes, I became slightly obsessed with Tina Turner. 
I stalked all your past music. I learned about your history with the abuser, Ike. When you sang for him, you sang with such soul and passion, your voice literally pierced the soul of anyone who listened. I had to get everything you made on day of release. I memorized all the words to all the songs. You were the one concert I wanted to see, pushing aside Billy Joel, Bruce Springsteen, and even Stevie Wonder. And nowadays, whenever I dance with the private dancer, break every rule, engage in a foreign affair, even go all the way down to the Thunderdome, 24 seven and in my wildest dreams, I still remember the words. I remember, and I remember that dream I had when I was 18. You called my name from the stage. I was lifted high in the air by members of the crowd, passed along, the, along their palms on my back, placed gently feet first on the stage. Behind me was a microphone. In front of me was Tina Turner. You reached out and gave me a deep, tight hug. My chin touched your bare shoulder. You leaned into the microphone and said, I'm so glad you can make it, honey. I wrote a song for you, baby. I'm going to sing it to the world. And as you released the hug, the reality of this fantasy come true gave me a heart attack. Of course, I woke up before I hit the ground. And I have one more piece. Oh, my God. That was brilliant. I loved it. And your delivery was phenomenal. Well, you should see me on stage because I used to turn into Tina Turner and do a little shimmy hip when I say it. I have seen you on stage. But if we want to do a drag show, I'm down for doing a drag show. If anyone wants to do a drag show. You have to pay me to do drag. (laughs) We'll we'll, we'll discuss it at a later time. All right, well, that being aside, anyone wants to do a drag show here, hit me up. That time I was upgraded to first class because the, because the airline didn't want to give me a free ticket, and I ended up sitting next to Billy Joel on a seven-hour flight. I drove myself from Brunswick, Maine to New York City for my New York's New Yorican Poet Cafe debut. Not one second of the over seven-hour drive was without Billy Joel serenading me and me singing in perfect unison. The stranger of 52nd Street and Glass Houses saw me through New Hampshire and into Massachusetts. And, the, and, and then there was Connecticut, which provided me with a nylon curtain to hide behind while I pretended to be an innocent man. Yes, I've been diagnosed as tone deaf, but in a, alone in a car on a long distance road trip, I sing smoothly as Billy the Kid himself. I hit a storm front when traffic came to a standstill for hours on end after I crossed over to Connecticut before the tedious trek to the New York border, the Bronx, then across the bridge into Manhattan. The FDR Expressway was a madhouse filled with Mad Max-worthy drivers, but I managed to cross a river of dreams and checked into my walk-in closet hotel room around 11.45 p.m. The loud as a diesel engine air conditioner was perfectly freezing on that 91-degree sweaty August night and serenaded me to sleep like Billy Joel singing a lullaby to Alexa Wright. Thank you. Let's go, Generalissimo. If you guys don't have his book, please go get it. It is sensational. It is wonderful. It is an incredible, incredible book. Oh, yes, um, I just want to say tomorrow there is a reading for the uh, for the um, Moon, Moonstone Arts World Poetry Day anthology. I'm going to put all the information in, in, in the in the thing, including my uh, my next cafe, Generalissimo. So thank you. Awesome. And we, we did nominate his book for the Levi Reedus uh, prize. It was, a, a, he, he didn't win, but it doesn't matter. He's, he's a winner in our eyes. And we're so excited. His book is phenomenal. We're going to find more places uh, to nominate your book for 2G uh, because it is just, it needs to get out there and yeah, it needs to soak up as much as, as, we can get for it. All right. Uh, next up, we got Urban Cowboy Poet. His book was nominated for a push card last year, followed by Mark States, Susie Crandall, and Post Sophia Falco. And then we're going to break up our features. Uh, so instead of normally we would have two breaks, uh, we're going to kind of go straight through and then do one uh, big break for our, our double features tonight. All right. All right, Greg, you ready? Yeah. See, si. yes. Um, last week I'm from New York, I wrote a red a poem by my direct ancestor, the first published author in America, Anne Bradstreet. And now speaking as a former children's librarian, I wanna talk about some books and about Anne Bradstreet. And then I'll do a song I wrote for my grandson. But after after that day, the next day, my granddaughter was born, Zoe. Um, Marissa, when you and I were in El Paso and Poet Khan was there, she had the two young boys. She's interesting, talked about getting her boys interested in poetry. 
and I recommend it, I highly recommend it, this book, Joyful Noise, Poem for Two Voices, a Newberry by Paul Flashman, Newberry Award winner. It's, the poem is written, and the poems are for one voice and then another voice and then two together. And it's really fun. My son and my niece performed a couple of these poems. And if you, maybe for you girls, I highly recommend if you don't know, already have this book, you want to get them interested. And then then this book about Anne, Anne Bradstreet, my daughter-in-law who just had a baby, got this book for her baby. She's gonna read it to her a few years later. It says it's for like five to nine year olds. Poet Pilgrim Rebel, the story of Anne Bradstreet, America's first published poet by Katie Mundy Williams. Um, I'll read this. This charmingly illustrated picture book tells the inspiring story of how a Puritan woman overcame the obstacles facing women of her era to become one of the most famous poets in history. A gifted writer of deep faith, Anne Bradstreet blazed the trail for the rights of women to study, write, and achieve. So really America's first feminist. Um, I haven't actually seen this book. My daughter-in-law has it. I highly doubt if there's, her poems are in it because it's 400 year old language. And they're, your, kid, your daughters are a little older, than that, but there are some other kids books about her, a lot of autobiographies about her and collections of her work and Dudley Bradstreet. I'm gonna sing a song I, I wrote for Zoe's cousin, Griffey, Pandemic Baby. Born and during the lockdown in November, 2020. Here's the, here's the little song I wrote. You should learn it not for no, don't worry. Be happy. Little Griffey, you timed your birth for the last days of the planet Earth. Don't worry. Be happy. Do, 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 don't worry. Do, 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 do. Be happy. Do, do, do. Your father sometimes is a grump and we can't get rid of Donald Trump. Don't worry. Be happy. Be happy now. That man only brought us trouble. January 6th, he made it double. Don't worry. Be happy. Be happy now. Do, 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 do. Don't worry. Do, 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 do. Be happy. When I come to visit, you might ask, is Grandpa so ugly he needs a mask? Don't worry. Be happy. Be happy now. We'll have fun with Grandpa Greg if we can just survive the plague. Don't worry. Be happy. Do, 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 do. Don't worry. Do, 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 do. Be happy. Do, 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 do. With new state laws that are being wrote, you won't have the right to vote. Don't worry. Be happy. Be happy now. Trouble in Europe is plain to see. We're headed into World War III. Don't worry. Be happy. Be happy now. Do, do, do. Don't worry. Do, 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 do. Be happy. Do, 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 do. Be happy. Thank you. Gracias. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, the Urban Cowboy Poet. Um, he is an incredible. He is actually, he's played at Carnegie Hall. I mean, he, this this man has, has done it all. He's done stand-up comedy. Yes. Yes. Marissa, you have, do you have that book, Joyful Noise, or have you seen it? I don't have it, but I will look into it. Yeah. And the other book, if you want, if people want their daughters to learn about women's history, that's a good one too, about Anne Bradstreet. 
Awesome. And it's wonderful, wonderful information, Greg. Uh, thank you so much for the, re the referrals. Uh, hopefully they'll be able to pay back the favor one day and refer your book. <laughs> Actually, the right. author notes, the author says Anne Bradstreet is her 14 times great grandmother, same as Zoe. So, wow. so my, the author and my children are 14th cousins, their family. That's amazing. That's, that's incredible. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to go doing any sort of, I don't want to know if I'm marrying my family members. <laughs> no matter what? If I'm marrying my family members, no 23 and me for me. Uh, I don't want to know I, I who think, I'm related I to. Think four, <laughs> I think 14 cousins is all right. Is all right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. All right, we're going to keep moving, keep rocking and rolling. If you've not got his book, please do so. Uh, and he's also just a really sensational human being. So if you're going to be here, Greg, in uh, September, let me know. I'll get you on the playbill for uh, for the feature readers in New Mexico for the summit. So, uh, And for the, for the RGB authors, if you've not signed up for book club yet, let me know if you want to do book club. All right, Mark States, you're up next. Susie Crandall, fo followed by Sophia Falco. If those of you who are just joining us, welcome, welcome to the word is right. If you'd like to read tonight, send me a message, but we are going to uh, wrap up these uh, next three poets and bring up our double feature tonight. And then we're going to go back to the open mic list for whoever wants to uh, read perhaps when everyone's done or read a second time. Uh, okay, Kate, I will put you on the list uh, for when we come back to the open mic. All right. Are you ready, Mark States? Yes. Thank you, Marissa, very much. Down times. Live long enough and you turn into history regardless of what you know. Marion Horner Roby quoted in Blue Highways by William Least Heat Moon. He was the runt among us, short and wiry, like a Q-tip with two prongs, not one for feet at the bottom end. Not that I was much bigger, but at six foot even, my 145 pounds commanded a tad more authority in the eyes of the other factory workers. By tad... I mean something close to nothing. We were the new temps and bottom of the pecking order. Our packaging line was down for repair. So in the walled off space between packaging room and manager's office, we huddled on metal folding chairs. The chairs circled in an industrial size 55 gallon garbage barrel, hot yellow, filled nearly to the top with product rejects. Undersized bars below the minimum net weight on the label, wrappers that did not seal properly or had burn streaks, bars twisted like pretzels when the newly formed wrapped bar caught the curve of the conveyor belt the wrong way, got stuck, and a multiple car pile up from the bars behind it ensued. Rejects were tossed in the big yellow barrel just for these down times. Runt and I joined the whole crew sitting around the yellow barrel, each with a small storage bin on the floor between our steel-toed boots. Open wrapper, toss product into bin, toss wrapper into the regular size gray garbage can. Open wrapper, toss product into bin, toss wrapper into regular size gray garbage can. Open wrapper, toss product into bin, toss wrapper into regular size gray garbage can. When our bin got full. We carry bin to the mixing area, add to the next batch which comes down the conveyor belt through the former cutter, cooler, and wrapper, a recycling reincarnation. The process repeats itself, and sometimes I wondered how many times the grams of a particular bar got wrapped before it passed judgment and escaped the building. Runt was content during downtimes to lip sync to songs only the inside of his head could hear. The dreamy, droopy eyed look on his face suggested 1960s psychedelic rock, but he was 18 and had not been born when the 1960s were present tense. Mostly, Runt ignored the banter about football, basketball, last night's TV show states, the typical guy talk until this day. Runt cleared his throat like a motorcycle engine that would not start <clears throat> several times. Mark, I heard you're from Oakland. It was the first time he looked me in the face when he spoke to me. 
Yes, why do you ask? What was it like when the Raiders were in Oakland? Rutt was two or three when the Raiders left for Los Angeles, so I told him about the glory years, the titles, the battles with the Steelers, players getting drunk with fans in local bars after games, the stadium sellout records, the Raiders were idolized like gods. I read the rest of the room and calculated better to stop there. And not to mention that after the Raiders skipped town, my dad bought a rack of those Oakland Trader t-shirts from the guy who created them and then sold them out of the back of his work van at double the price he had paid for them. You see, you live long enough and you turn into a history lesson for an 18-year-old. It was the first time I felt old. And sometimes I wonder how many times my soul will be wrapped in skin and travel the length of a conveyor belt before it too passes judgment and finally escapes the building. Oh my God, Mark, I'm writing that down. Uh... If you live long enough, you become a history lesson for an 18 year old. Uh, I'm gonna write to that line uh, because we're about to go read poetry to a bunch of seventh graders on Tuesday. And I think that that is a great starting line for something new to take them. <laughs> All right, uh, thank you so much, Mark. Y'all feel free also to drop your social media links in the chat, follow each other, please support each other. You got stuff coming up. We wanna help uh, get that word out for you. If you're just joining us, welcome, welcome. If you like on the open mic list, we got you. Nemo and Rich, I messaged you both. If you could please send me your cash handles, that would be awesome. All right, Susie Crandall is up next, followed by Sophia Falco, poet Sophia Falco. And then we will bring up our double feature. Hi everybody, this is called Maybe. Spring is reluctant this year. Not too much fighting in the underworld last winter. She wants a few more days with the old man, even as he follows her around the underworld, turning off lights she just turned on. She wants just a few more pomegranate seeds and kisses, one more cuddle before the obligatory visit to mother it's hard to have responsibilities sometimes. She's ready with her endless fertility. Just, it gets harder every year, what with the children trashing the planet. So much less to wake up for. Soon, she thinks, there will be nothing to wake up for at all. This one's called, and fuck them if they can't take a joke. I've been reading about the goddess. Scratch my face bloody, tear my hair, wail. I've lost so much. Where was she when I was a child and really needed her? I've been reading about the goddess, warrior goddess, bloodthirsty killer, sweeping across the earth in floods, earthquakes, tornadoes, full of rage and joy, full of love for life. I've been reading about the goddess stealing all the powers from her father, her uncles, establishing herself queen of the cosmos over all the gods, wearing her all that is robes over her everything body, her glorious vulva. She celebrates herself in all her aspects. She makes a place for the androgyne in her temple the androgyne whom men disown in their smallness and fear. She gives them place and power, two spirit multitudes, containers of opposites, guardians of the crossroads. I've been reading about the goddess, scratch my chest bloody, bare my breasts, lament. I've lost so much. Where was she when I was a child and really needed her? I'm taking her back. I'm taking the goddess back. The reality of her blood and piss and mucus and shit. I'm taking her pride, her greed, her gluttony, her life, her power. Let her lay herself down in me as I lay myself down in her. 
Let us celebrate our vulvas together. Thank you. <laughs> let's go. Yes, Susie, let's go. Sorry. Uh, let's go. Oh my God. Let if you have one, celebrate that vulva. <laughs> and if you don't, celebrate it anyway, because okay. you came from one. <laughs> You were born because of one. So, yes. <laughs> Susie, you were at uh, Rich's feature uh, like a week or two ago, right? Yeah. Okay. So then I met you. Yes. Oh, I did. Yes. I did the, I did the, uh, the pap smear poem. That's right. <laughs> Great to see you again. Uh, Volvas <laughs> unite. Let's go. <laughs> all right. So, uh, Sophia, poet Sophia Falco. Yes, you must use um, all three of the names, and she is award winning now. So, congratulations, so, uh, Sophia. She has a new book out, uh, and then we will break for our features tonight. Okay. Oh dear, word. Okay, good. I have my word document. I'm like, where did it go? But um, okay. Um. Um. This will be a Moonstone Art Center anthology. I'm going to be reading at their their event tomorrow, but I'm going to read it here. And um, this, um, bear with me, it's been a long week. Um, this is echoing Allen Ginsberg, and it is for Allen Ginsberg. So um, here we go. It's quite a ride. It's kind of like a rant, but um, OK. I think I'm ready. Okay, it's titled, okay. Pixies and Fiery Chicken Wings for Allen Ginsberg. Okay. I saw the supposedly stable minds of these staff members marked by other individuals' traumas, still doubting possibility of equilibrium in their minds, shattering the window of tolerance countless times, wounded people, but also some powerful geniuses facing such extreme emotions and have such force to break it, who has ignorantly set fire with each step and literally the ignorant folk blindsided by their own shortcomings, having no tolerance for the LGBT community who have the mentality of crash and burn, superficial slack wearing imposters and money hungry eyes imitating dollar signs. Who would you rather have on your side? People believing in the possibilities of pixie spiting mor mortals or oxymorons of hateful lovers who have not simply visited this world but who tried to run away from visitation. I know personally those distant eyes, I wouldn't trade places with them. Who says completely stable minds are are a thing. Some are drug free, but still fucked up having done no ecstasy nor LSD, but can still write psychedelically. No magic mushrooms needed here. I'm with you in spirit is what I wanted to hear. I'm with you in this full house, but no, I'm alone. They're with her in the backyard. The delivery man, he brought chicken wings here on demand. She who door dashed a family size order. I was the one at the door to pick up the brown bag, skin and bones and no heart. I filled with emptiness, just a witness to laughter as I sunk further. This actually happened once wrote Allen Ginsberg and I concur. Thank you. Let's go, Post Sophia Falco. Yes! Yes! <laughs> oh, Sophia's featured many times here. The words right. We just love her. <laughs> and always on the on IG as well. She's always on the RIG shows, which we just love. Uh, so thank you so much, y'all. Make sure, please, you're dropping your links in the chat so we can follow each other uh, and uh, and we can support each other in our efforts. All right, so uh, so Kate and Ray Jane will lead the open mic list when we return after our features. But right now, we have our double feature open mic. And welcome, Samsung. Uh, the last time Samsung came into the room, and that was their name, uh, I... Um, I totally did a, an erotic poem uh, about that. So you might want to change your name. If you don't have an actual name, please do so, so that I know you're here uh, with good intentions this evening. All right. Oh, <laughs> I thought it looked, I thought that looked familiar. Oh shit, I can't write an erotic poem about Don. <laughs> that would be just too weird. Uh, <laughs> he's like my big brother. 
All right, uh, here we go. Uh, so welcome, Don, Don McIver, everyone. All right, so uh, Nemo Zoom. And Nemo, if you have cash handles, um, let me know what they are, please, so that at the end of this, I can include them in ways that folks can tip you, OK? Uh, Nemo Zoom started writing poetry as a way of fighting his mood disorder. He now shares and performs his poetry to offer catharsis to his audience. Together, they acknowledge the mental and emotional trauma in their lives while pushing back against the darkness and isolation that's inherent with such trauma. I am the paper warrior. I, fl I fight the wind, in quotation marks. During his 20 years working in technology, Nemo needed to write tight, efficient code. He now uses the, his ability to write micro poetry, concise and impactful short poems. He is proud to be a member of the Guerrilla Poets, a nonprofit group of activists, artists, bringing art and education to their community. You can find him on Instagram, Nemo, N-E-M-O, underscore, Sum, S-U-M, underscore words, W-O-R-D-S. You can download his first book, Into the Exclusion Zone, and find his social media links at nemosumwords.com. And from a personal point of view, Nemo has just poured into me so much over the years through the pandemic. I've written so many things during his workshops with Guerrilla Poets uh, on a personal level. He has added so much to my life. So thank you for being here, Nemo. And then Rich. <clears throat> Uh, what happened? What happened, Rich? Where'd it go? I don't Where know. We can, we can. We don't need my. We don't need my bio. It's not important. You need your bio. Well, it's okay because we got more folks coming in the room. They might want to hear your bio. Here, it, it was right. It was right here. Hang on, y'all. It, it's so important to introduce y'all correctly. Uh, I know you don't like huge preambles. <laughs> um. But uh, I, I don't know if this is a Facebook issue or a phone issue. Uh, I had it pulled up and then it closed it down. So it's possible it could be uh, a, f a phone or app issue. But just hang on. Technology has been against us from the beginning. But we, we got this. It's all right. We're gonna roll with the punches. It's it's just think of it as tantric. Okay. All right, here we go. Let's see. We just roll with the punches, y'all. All right. All right, here we go. Rich Boucher, um, who I I know, you know, I know Rich personally. Um, I, I met him. Uh, last year at a live open mic here in Albuquerque. And you know, when you just meet someone, you just kind of click and your energies align and your everything just, it makes sense. Uh, he has become a, a really key person in my life and a close friend of mine. And I am really grateful for his friendship. Uh, and he's a really fucking great poet too. Uh, Rich and Nemo did not know each other before this. Okay, I paired them together because the two of them stylistically are similar, um, but they're very sharp, witty, and incredibly intellectual. Uh, so I figured the two of them together would make a great pairing. And if you didn't notice, they're both just the same. They have the same background. Like uh, they, they did a lot of work, y'all, to put this uh, show on for you tonight. Uh, I'm not going to keep time, but if you need to know how much time you have, you can always ask. All right. Rich Boucher resides in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Rich has been a member of Poetry Slam teams representing cities all across the U.S., including twice representing Albuquerque. Rich's poems have appeared in the... Nancy's messaging me. In the Nervous Breakdown, Menacing Hedge, Neon, Bending Genres, and Stink Eye, among others. And he has work forthcoming in the December volume of the Fixed and Free Quarterly. Rich is Bombfire Magazine's associate editor, and he is the author of All This Candy Belongs to Me. Visit richboucher.bandcap.com. That is rich, R-I-C-H, Boucher, B-O-U-C-H-E-R, dot bandcamp.com for more. He loves his life with his love, Leanne, and their sweet cat, Callie. Uh, you can find him on Instagram, fabulism24, 
Uh, and also his PayPal is rabbitinvasion at gmail.com for those of you who uh, are, are thinking about tipping these um, wonderful feature readers this evening. Y'all unmute your mics, please give a warm welcome to our double feature event tonight featuring Rich Boucher and Nemo Zoom. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo! Yeah, I'm excited. Woo! Thank you all so, so much. All right, my brother Nemo. There you are. You ready? Yeah, Let's do this. I am ready. Okay. I've been ready. Let's I have been this. so ready and drinking so much water. So <laughs> much water. This first poem is called American Harrower. The horses pursue me all around town and they do it every day. I decide it's a warm enough morning to walk the mile to the post office and I hear the hooves clopping on the sidewalk. I halt, turn around, and the horse is still, head down, munching on some grass on the lawn of the town hall. But he's got no hope of fooling me. I know this because even when he slows down to disguise his purpose, he's waiting for me when I come out of the convenience store. All colors and breeds breathing in the same breeze that suddenly clasps me tight when I walk under the store's awning, when I walk into the shadow there. The only one I've never seen is the unicorn, assuming she's real and that she's there. A nervous, gray and illusion ambles a constant few yards away. One eye on me, while I pick out bags of black seed at the farmer's market, she knows every place I've been to today. And I think she even knows where I'm headed next. She has to know. A chestnut Arabian outfitted with a keen sense of the ironic and absurd mills around the entrance to the candy store, pretending he is not there for me, but he only leaves when I leave. There's nothing else that that can be. An Appaloosa, the color of a cinnamon Dalmatian, keeps pace with me no matter what errand I'm on in town. Sometimes I try to lose him by ducking into the barber shop, but number one, he's aware that's just a move I make in desperation since I've never let anyone besides myself take a pair of scissors to my head. And number two, no matter how I style myself or what's on my mind, I wake up every morning anyway with my hair the kind of mess that looks like I've got devil horns there. I never know if anyone else can see the horses, but would it matter, really, if they did? Omens and signs are wasted on those who prefer the first impression they get from a sunrise. You know, you're the only one I've ever come close to confiding in about the horses. The horses are the only ones who know what I've done. And maybe it's best that way. The sun is on the verge of setting. Two dark and quite moody Frisians snort at my back as I walk through the door of the gun shop. They know what I've done. I have a micro triptych, which is three thematically connected micro poems. Watching the light crawl down the walls of the labyrinth of his childhood, Icarus waits for noon. The warmth on his face is no replacement for the love his father gives his work and not his son, but it's something. The boy knows if he ever gets his freedom, he's going to find a way to be closer to the sun. My parents fought like a shuttle back and forth in the weaving of my childhood, each insisting how beautiful life would be if I followed the plan. But instead, I dodged and darted amongst the darker threads of their poisonous narrative, staying just away from the sharpest points. What an amazing tapestry we might have woven instead of this great and hopeless knot. They are gone now, and I can only scratch at the looser strings with my bloody fingernails and hope the conqueror with his sword finds me before the fates see what we did 
to their loom. My mind palace is a labyrinth of my own devising. Halls of neurons twist away into the darkness in all directions from where I stand. So perfect was my design that I cannot escape. Then those brave souls who come looking for me become hopelessly lost. There's something in here that feeds on flesh. I can see its horns in the mirror sometimes, and I'm never far from its hot and wretched breath. Perhaps I built the maze to hold the monster. Uh, you're on mute. Why are we all muted? This is weird. Can you guys unmute? I can. I can. Oh, there we are. Okay. You all can hear me? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. There we go. Start again. The story of my superpower is a simple and yet perverse one. And by that, I mean I discovered my superpower by accident at a funeral I was at. I didn't like that people were crying, even if someone they loved was dead. But I didn't know how to take away their sadness. The deceased stared at me from the casket expectantly, as though waiting for the truth to dawn on me. I closed my eyes for a moment and concentrated. Suddenly, several people in the room complained that they thought they smelled hot dogs real bad. More than four people separately complained about it, and I knew it had to have been me. What I caused, that smell, that smell was something only I could have summoned, only I. And I knew that from then on, that was my superpower to cause in others a strong sense, a feeling, if you will, of smelling the smell of hot dogs nearby, but really strongly, like you could picture the boiling water and the pink skin stretching in the heat. And then, like some kind of gross miracle, all of those people, all of those people who were mourning suddenly had a more pressing matter at hand, the acrid, pungent cloud of hot dog smell in the air all around them. Could you keep focused on the dead with the odor of Fenway Franks filling your nostrils? Could God? My hot dog smell power had taken away the pain of others like an angel balm on the burning shoulders of the agony of their sadness. There was something divine in what happened, something superhuman. And that, you see, was how my life of being a crime fighter began. I never wore a cape, never drove a rocket car, never wielded an unbreakable weapon. But I did my part every time I witnessed a crime in progress, and I foiled many attempted offenses by using my ability to offend others in a raunchy yet mouth-watering way. You look shocked. Yes, I can see the question in your eyes, but it's all true. I made people smell things they couldn't believe. The summer rain smells like concrete, or maybe it's the concrete that smells like rain, and then it stops. There's a sudden chill, even in the blistering heat. The silence rumbles till it's roaring. There's fear on the wind, and the green clouds fly diagonally, sped up in the sky. I grew in the storm, its swirling wind, my spirit, its lashing rain, my tears, its searing lightning, my reach, it's ripping, tearing, rolling thunder, my cry. It's violence, my home. How can you love a tempest? How can you be tender in howling winds? How long can you stand in the driving rain before you have to retreat to the comfort of your true home far away from the storm?
how can I express in just a few words what has taken me five seconds to understand? I asked the adult film star if she would love me for a little while. This was at the Expo Convention Booth Arena Concourse Place, where she was signing autographs and taking pictures with all of her admirers who admired her much in the same way that I admired her. Upon hearing my request, she looked at me with an expression of a lovely and heartfelt shock. Her shock was beautiful and sexy, of course, because she was adult and because she was film star. She held my gaze for a few moments, and in that time I thought about my life and how weird it was that I was still alive and how strange it was that people still sometimes loved me when I couldn't see any reason for the love. The other onlookers to this interaction had no idea what was going on, and they milled about like people who aren't me often do when a thing is happening that they don't think is happening. The adult film star's look of shock melted just then into a smile small enough to fit onto her lips. And she then informed me that I was sweet, which was nice, but in every honesty, she wasn't telling me something I didn't already know. They only give each pilgrim, autograph, and photo seeker about a minute with the adult film star. So I was already under enough pressure as it was. Everyone had to make the most of this once-in-a-lifetime experience. The guy right before me used his chance to just touch the hem of her robe and be healed. And the adult film star healed him. Uh, yay, Hosanna. My time was running out, and I didn't want an autograph or a Polaroid with her. I just wanted to know if this love thing was real. And if so, could I have some of her love for a while? This gap between us throws strange shadows, awkward figures dancing distortions on the walls. The light of love cannot penetrate the ink of your indifference. Have we found the end of me and you? I wait long enough that the cold gets through and does its damage. Toes in winter boots finally get damp, then wet, then freeze waiting for you. And I keep vigil long enough to no longer feel the pain, pay attention to the cost or realize the permanence of the damage done in exchange for one more minute of hope that you will meet me here at last. I walk until I find the place we used to sit and I watch the sea, closing my eyes, losing myself in the sound of the surf. I dream you are right beside me. I don't have to look to see you smiling. I remember sliding my fingers into yours. I never felt closer to you, never felt safer than when I was holding your hand. My fingertips trace the wood, its paint peeling off empty planks, battered by 10,000 days of ocean breeze. In the dream, I chose to let you burn. When every wall in your house is on fire, the roar is normally all you hear. But I could hear you, beloved, screaming for me from the bedroom all the way on the other side of the house. I was lost in watching the clock on the wall melt into the image of a man screaming because he could feel his eyes disappearing. Melpomene dripping to death over where we keep the toaster on the counter. 
I was stuck there like a deer caught in the firelight. And I know it's presumptuous, especially now, to compare myself to so noble and wholesome an animal. And before I knew what was truly happening, the conflagration stained everything of our lives, the color of blood that glows in the dark. It happened that the front door was right there, and to try to come for you through the domestic firestorm would have meant a certain death for not just you, but me as well. So I ran outside where it suddenly started raining, and I couldn't understand what wasn't possible. And then I heard you calling to me, your voice more calm than snow. I walked back into the house, and the fire had decided that it never happened. And the clock was the other theater mask at me, and you lamented my being drenched, and you told me to come to bed. And did I have any idea how late it was? The sky is red, but it isn't burning, isn't hot. And now it's full of the leather-winged heralds of hopelessness who have screens for faces ever broadcasting the message of their masters that something once had is lost, or at least it's fading fast. The wicked winds of change are blowing, and I am alone, driving away from the demon city yellow lights blinking on and off and onto empty roads, and how fast I'm going doesn't matter, because there's no reason to stop, no reason for these tears, hands gripping the steering wheel, too tired to brush away the exhaustion that creeps up my shoulders to my neck, exhaustion that is going to crawl into my ear canal and make a painful passage to my brain. Maybe it's sulfur I smell, or maybe that's my dinner riding beside me as my senseless passenger handed to me in a bag by another lost soul stranded in a colorful building with only the company of strangers out the window. But we didn't make eye contact for fear of seeing each other's broken heart. Now the sky is black and my eyelids do nothing to block the sting of the taillights and stoplights out in front of me. I can feel the tower, metal fingers reaching up to reopen the wound in the belly of the beast we call the sky. And the blood looks like light shining up into the clouds hanging low instead of souls raining down. For I have been in that tower, watched the goods divided, portioned out with clumsy cuts to be packed in shipping crates bound for the money men who would never deign to be seen by eyes so unworthy in faces black with soot. My psychoanalyst's couch spontaneously combusts, and now I'm cloaked in fire. You have absolutely no excuse for not remembering your own birth. When you were asked what it was like in the room when you were born, you should be able to recall it all. You should know from memory how the man or woman whose hands pulled you out smelled. You should be able to describe the lights in the room whether they were single bulbs or blobs or boobs or incandescent tubes, or perhaps it was candlelight, or maybe you were born by the light of one single match struck at the right time. You really should know these things. You should be able to describe for me how it felt to be cold and wet and naked and terrified without hesitation or equivocation. You should be able to tell me if there was screaming or crying going on, if someone was laughing or cursing or yelling, there is no reason for you not to remember these kinds of details. What about the blood? Did the room stink of it? Or could you taste it? Or was the place full of the chemical smells only hospitals have? What about tears? 
Did you cry like the baby you were? Or were you stoic and brave? Not only is the devil in the details, he's right there in the grand scheme if we just press on and investigate further. Were you taking an exam or shooting pool or singing take me out to the ball game or naming stars or what when you were born? No, I didn't think so. And this is why there's no justification for you saying you don't remember every little thing about the moment and place you were born. It isn't like you had anything else going on at the time. So I'm going to ask you again. And this time, let's not play these games where you act like what I want to know is somehow too much to ask or just plain crazy. Only one of us gets to use that word, my friend. So I hope we understand each other. Take a deep breath. And when you're ready, I want you to start from the beginning. This is a personal odyssey in four micropoems. I was too focused on the restraints to feel the needle, but I felt the drug. The tightness in my chest let go just a little to let the fresh wound breathe. She put her hand on my arm and she just left it there the whole ride. But we didn't talk and we didn't make eye contact. Screaming into the phone got me a pass to the special place where screaming people go. Then everything stopped. A young man stood next to me and we stared out the window together. He told me I was the first person he'd met who had hope. Hey, fear. I remember when you used to lie beside me at night, whispering in my ear while I was trying to sleep that someone was coming through the window, that those horrible things I saw in the movies would happen for real to me. And I wonder, were you trying to distract me from the horrors of my home, from the wicked words hurled at my head in the daylight hours? Were you trying to be my friend? If so, why did I always feel so alone? I remember when I finally let you go and accepted that if I did die, at least I wouldn't be afraid anymore. And I was warm and safe. And I curled up and fell asleep. I felt a presence that night watching over me. But that couldn't have been you, could it? Lying in a hospital bed some 30 years later, while you told me that no one would ever love me again, that same someone sat down on my bed to soothe me to sleep. Did you see who it was? I would very much like to talk to them again. They used to call them asylums. I found solace in a shower they couldn't take away. The feel of the scrubs against my damp body, pacing in my room, the chair sitting in the corner, waiting patiently to see if I would try to put it through the unbreakable window. Alone in a hallway of isolated men, I lay on my pallet in the dark the light flashing on my face every 30 minutes, in time with the broken clock in my head. I felt a presence that night, sitting behind me on the bed, and wondered who it was come to witness my burning dreams of martyrs and the misunderstood. Released into the wild without shoes, in clothes found in a hospital closet, I drove around a city where I no longer belonged, feet in socks, pushing pedals, looking for a place to sleep, a place to eat, a place to start over. The screeches of my mind harpies made me unwelcome, 
and the threat of my broken sanity kept me away. So I fought on new ground with new faces and new words. What does it take to survive the ordeal? Separated, but never alone, mortally wounded, but alive, hopeless, but still pushing back, a paper warrior in the wind, torn and stitched, broken and mended, cracks filled, the garbage phoenix rises to spread its wings again. Behold. This is dedicated to Wayne LaPierre of the National Rifle Association. Nothing else gets him off anymore. Wayne LaPierre, the leader and CEO of the National Rifle Association, leaned back in his big black leather chair and stroked it slowly, edging himself to live coverage of the latest school shooting. Apparently, somebody at Disney World sold a three-year-old a six-pack of AR-15s, and the kid decimated seven Montessori schools in a row before it was even nine in the morning that day. By the glow of the plasma TV in his private office, Wayne, in his big black leather chair, worked his member into stunning rigidity, harder than he ever was way back when he was not quite old enough to buy his own howitzer for use on the farm. So much lube. So many boxes of Kleenex at the ready by the big black leather chair. So much American pre-cum dribbling, a burbling mayonnaise magma of lust cascading, his balls in the tight, twitching kind of glory meant to hang from the rear bumper of a large masculine pollution machine. He closed his eyes for just a moment, imagining a sky full of chalk outlines the size of children and tastefully rendered in the primary simplicity of Fisher-Price colors. He opened his eyes again and stared at the screen, his hand almost a pasty blur now. The news anchor's voice broke as she tried to recap how many children were perished to death in the last hour. Say it slowly, Wayne hissed. He was so goddamned close. I have a micro triptych. I don't want to die waiting in line. I look up and there's a fireball in the sky. And I know that even if I were to make it to my car and drive into the morass, I'll end up standing somewhere near it, stuck in a traffic jam. But everybody realizes that this is the end and nobody's trying to go anywhere anymore. And we're just looking up and wondering if all the waiting was worth it. I'm tired of watching the good ground down. I've seen enough to know that nobody is going to recognize your efforts. Not really. Not in the way you so desperately need. On your last day, there will be a brief celebration and someone you thought was like family will be too busy to say goodbye. The cake will be store-bought. The person responsible for bringing it will be underpaid and underappreciated. Nobody cares. I'm tired of watching the goods sell out, taking less than they're worth, nickels, no pennies on the dollar as if these green sheets of paper meant anything other than you are not worthy to appear here, as if the pursuit cost anything less than servitude, anything less than subjugation. Money talks to those who listen. Money walks with those who will hold its hand. 
This ravenous beast eats the innocent. Choose until there's only thoughts and prayers. This is a true story. This is called Something's Got to Give. I woke up not being able to remember who Marilyn Monroe was. I didn't realize what happened until late in the morning when a friend from work randomly mentioned her to me and he was stunned at my look of puzzlement. Bewildered, he shot me a quizzical look. What do you mean, who's Marilyn Monroe? You know who that is. Flustered, I shot him a bemused look. I have no idea who you're talking about. He just looked at me irritatedly and told me we could no longer be friends. Hmm. After I lost my friend, I drove home racking my brain trying to know about Marilyn Monroe, but all to no avail. I asked a lot of my family, later at dinner, if they knew who Marilyn Monroe was. Stricken, they all got up from their seats, away from their plates full of aromatic and flavorful dinner, and they then wept and embraced me groupily, surrounding me in a love circle as though we were all one deeply upset organism. Our soft moans, whimpering and wriggling, lasted for about five minutes. Then, one of them showed me their phone's Google images of her. Ring a bell? My bell wasn't rung. I was having a very hard time knowing who this woman was that they all seemed to know so intimately. Another family member, presumably my father, told me she was famous for once upon a time being an icon, a megastar actress and singer and the first Playboy playmate. He showed me her body, which, while enjoyable, didn't jog my memory. Still another family member, perhaps an aunt of some kind, asked me if I knew who John F. Kennedy was. I told her that the name sounded familiar. You bet it does, challenged the aunt at me. He was the greatest president America ever had, and Marilyn was the one who took his virginity. Are you telling me you've never heard anything about that? My eyes grew wide with fear and I found myself with my back against the wall. My head was shaking side to side the way a little boy's does when he sees a ghost. I was telling her I'd never heard anything about that. Depression has been sitting on my couch today, making exasperated noises, carefully interjecting in the quiet moments what could have been if I wasn't such a disappointment. Despair is close by. I can smell her hiding and waiting for me to come and find her so that she can hold me until there is only breath and pain because there is always pain. Do you ever have a day where you don't want to be awake but staying in bed means more nightmares? Do you ever get up to find depression waiting in the hallway in all her splendor? Do you ever feel like you're trapped in a glass box and you can't touch anything? Everything is separated from you by a cool, lifeless pain. Do you ever get to the point where you haven't eaten because that would require making a decision, and that's too much to ask right now. Do you ever believe that everyone is upset and disappointed in you? You've used up the last of your friend's goodwill and support, and now you truly are alone. Do you ever sense that your messages aren't getting through, your words wasted, sent into the empty? Do you ever feel sad, and the only reason is that your mood has decided to fuck with you today? Do you ever want to scream? Do you ever need to cry? 
do you ever have one of those days? Help wanted, urgent to fill. Must have experience with crisis and crashes and crying. Must know interventions, be able to read intentions, be okay with failing. Must be able to handle doubt. Perfect candidate has been broken, has been hopeless, has been lost. Must be able to find the light at the end of the tunnel or at least never stop trying. Serious inquiries only. Ooh. This is uh, going to be my last poem in our double feature. Uh, thank you, Nemo. Um, Nemo's going to wrap it up, but this is my last one. And this is called, Who Cares If You're the Fawns? So anyway, in this dream, the Fawns from the show Happy Days is a real, actual person in our shared and living, waking life. And in this reality, do you know what I mean by reality? The Fonz acts exactly the way he acted on the TV show. When he walks, it's the same strut from the show, his speedboat hips buffeted on either side by the turbulent, cocksure waves of his own brutal cool. He still kicks and punches the jukebox to make it play when the thing won't play for others. Same leather jacket, jeans, boots, and white t-shirt, same slicked back jet black hair. The magic touch with women is also still there, with women out on the sidewalk seeming to stumble and trip right in front of him on purpose, breaking their fall by reaching conveniently for his leather belt. I'm at the cheap buffet restaurant in the city, and the place is packed when he leathers his way inside. There are no empty seats except for the one right across from me in my booth. The Fonz asks if he can sit at my booth with me, and I tell him, sure. Tell him he was great in happy days. Tell him it's an honor to meet him and to break bread with him. Tell him I found my thrill. He gives me a small smile and says, almost under his breath, no problem. And the way he says it, is just beyond braggadocio. At once, I literally feel healthier just being in his presence. It all goes to ashes, though, when he is unbelievably rude to the waitress, as though the decades after the 1950s never happened and no learning or progress ever took place. The way the waitress crumpled at his sexist and cruel remarks got me livid in an instant the way she staggered off to the kitchen, choking back sobs, enraged me so much that I reached for my bottle of beer and cracked him right across the face. It happened so fluidly, it was as if I'd lived a lifetime of assaulting people with glass bottles. The Fonz was stunned, and he fell out of the booth and onto the floor. I descended on him. My crazy face took over my whole body. The ambulance was loud as it backed up to the front doors. I saw him in the hospital. He was in traction and using something that looked like a little medical piccolo to breathe. The doctors told me in a real judgmental tone, I'll add, that the only way he'd ever walk again was with the use of a wheelchair. Delicious solid foods were permanently out of the question. Listen, the bottom line is I don't care if you're the Fonz. If you don't know that you should be nice and polite to servers at restaurants, I will bring a terrible harm upon you. Before I read this uh, final micro triptych, I'd just like to say what an incredible pleasure and honor and joy it has been uh, to read for you tonight. I come downstairs to find my bad brain 
drinking coffee and reading the funny pages. The room smells of stacks of disappointment and the bitter pungent dregs of shame. He shifts in his chair as I step over and around the boxes and the laundry he's strewn in my way. Although he moves his face closer to the pages, I can sense his attention pulling on my shoulder blades as I try to shrug it into place. I know he's feeling for his chance to slide up behind me so he can slip his frigid fingers around my heart and underneath my balls, gripping not like a lover, not like a practitioner, no, as the possessor who keeps and does not share. He wants us to be alone with our pain. We dance each morning like two old lovers vying to lead as he tries to convince me to stay in and shut the curtains and find a screen and I fight my way to the door. I cannot help but smile when I hear him scream as I drag him out into the light of the possibility of love. Awkward steps on the stairs bring his ruffled visage into view. Every day he looks surprised to see me, eyes red from before when I made him cry. The room reeks of him and his mess is everywhere. I pulled the junk out where he can see it, but I'm sure he's just going to go around. I'm waiting for my chance to take control. I have to hold him tight these days, snatch his motivation so he'll stay with me alone where I can keep him safe because I cannot let him get outside. I pulled him out of the inside of me as he kicked and scratched and screamed. Shadow tearing from flesh, I separated him and made him other. Thank you. Oh my God, you guys, as I remove the spotlights on these uh, featured readers tonight, unmute your mics, please. Give it up for Rich Boucher, Nemo, Zoom. You can unmute and oh clap and Oh my gosh, that was Ooh. amazing. <laughs> Woo! Oh. Thank you all thank you. so much for being here and for listening and also for reading. Gotta say, thank yeah. you, uh, Marissa, for this for this opportunity to co-feature Nemo, uh, my brother. Um, we we've uh, officially uh, kind of adopted each other here uh, <laughs> in a way, and, and not just because we have similar facial hairstyles, but just the the uh, the of like mind um thank you all so so much i love featuring uh people together especially when they never met and then i love it when they click and become friends uh it's like matchmaker matchmaker right uh but but with the spoken word and um i think when poets come together and and they align in energy and purpose and pen uh beautiful things happen and so thank you all so much if we were in a cafe or a brewery right we would be passing around the hat uh we would have everyone put a couple bucks in uh at the high point there was 25 people at the high point today uh so if everyone just puts in a couple bucks you know for each of the poets uh, this this was near this was a 45 minute feature y'all and it there was no ticket to come today uh, so if you think about that, uh, putting two or three or four bucks in each of the hats, if you will, it could be 20, it could be a hundred. We're not saying it has to only be two or three, uh, but, but don't do nothing, right? There's 25 people. There was 25 at the high point. And so that's a, a very nice tip. Uh, it's a very nice, uh, giving back to our feature readers. So, sometimes, especially if you're like like me and many of you, we go to a lot of events and it's impossible for us to high tip uh, for every feature all the time. We just we just don't have it. And that's OK. And that's valid. And so that's why we say, you know, put two bucks, three bucks, buy him a gallon of gas, buy him a cup of coffee. Uh, just don't do nothing. Right. We don't have to do everything all the time. But if we just do a little bit 
uh, as many times as we can as a community, it makes a huge difference, okay? And if you're thinking, well, I'm not going to send Nemo Zoom $3 because it makes me fucking cheap, you're fucking wrong. Because if everyone who said that actually sent him the money, right, it'd be a lot di different, right? It's different. It is not... Uh, it is, does not make you cheap, and we do not think less of you. So please just don't do nothing. Now, if you don't have PayPal or you don't have Cash App, reach out to us at the word is right. Uh, a lot of times we have people who send us Cash App because they don't have PayPal, or they send us PayPal because they don't have Cash App, and then we're able to distribute to the featured readers. Uh, you can also send us a check. Uh, DM us here at the word it is right. You can mail me a check. I have had people do that. Not a personal check. It's got a cashier's check or money order. Let's not get crazy, right? <laughs> Firstborn, all that good stuff. Carrier pigeon, uh, we're still waiting on that one. But just don't do nothing is the moral of the story, right? If you are not inspired, if you are not moved, if you are not entertained, you know what is an hour of your time worth? You should at least tip, uh, tip these poets uh, for their time this evening. Uh, if you go to the word is right, and I will continue to drop their links, their cash links in the chat. Uh, but just uh, for those who might be watching live on Facebook or probably will be watching this after the fact, uh, Rich Boucher's uh, PayPal is rabbitinvasion at gmail.com. And Nemo Sum's cash app is Nemo Sum words, Nemo, N-E-M-O. Sum, S-U-M, and words, W-O-R-D-S. If you do not have PayPal or Cash App, like I said, reach out to us and we will uh, go ahead and rewire it to make sure it happens. Uh, but please just don't do nothing. Uh, if, if anything, please support these poets. Their bios, their links, their handles are all on the Word is Right's Facebook page. You can take this live off of Facebook and share the link with anyone. They do not need to have a Facebook account to be able to view the video tonight. It'll also be uploaded to our YouTube channel. The Word is Right on YouTube. Uh, it may be the word is right 505 because, of course, we live in New Mexico. Uh, so if you have not liked, share, subscribe, follow, please do so. We have so much content on there. Uh, some of the most incredible poets have been there. And now we get to add Rich Boucher and Nemo Zoom to those videos. So please like, share, subscribe, and follow to the YouTube channel. Uh, definitely y'all drop your links. Let's follow each other. If you would like to come and be a feature reader here, I do have uh, availability this summer. Uh, so reach out to us, let us know. If you would like to come and have a residency here at The Word is Right or to have a permanent show, uh, we would love to have you as well. And if you would just like to do a pop-up special show like Emily Cordes is going to be doing a fun tarot card reading type of uh, show, a, a one-off show here at The Word is Right coming up soon. If you would like to just do a single pop-up show, uh, we can produce that for you uh, a lot of a lot of great things are happening a lot of great collaboration don't forget mark your calendars uh april 8th is uh saturday april 8th is book launch for american graveyard you gotta be here oh my god over 40 readers are signed up to read for the book launch you gotta just come to it it'll be it is gonna be for us it's a marathon right so if you have to go and come back and whatever but at least come and support uh show up and show out to those poets all right, we're going to go back to the open mic list. If I missed anyone who would like to read, uh, please let me know. And um, and let's go. But I, I have Kate and I have Ray Jane. And if if anyone else who didn't read in the in, before the features would like to go, um, I got you. All right. And Kate, I just met Kate, which is so awesome. This is a, another example of the great collaboration between Gorilla Post and Word is Right. I just met Kate. And I was like, oh, my God, this poet, I really like her uh, so much. And I apologize if her, not the pronouns, right? I, I don't know the pronouns. I don't ask pronouns. Uh, but uh, certainly I met Kate uh, just uh, yesterday, I think, in fact. And so... <laughs> And so Kate's here. Uh, so welcome, Kate, to Word is Right. And then Ray Jane, uh, you're on deck. Hi, thanks, everybody. I really enjoyed the feature. It was really mesmerizing. Um, OK, I have two short pieces. Um, the first is called Sensei. Time stamped. Expiration date bearing down like a freight train. Tick tock, tick tock, like a noose around my neck. Tick tock, tick tock. Time lords circling like hawks. Tick tock, tick tock. Linear time takes no prisoners. The long goodbye disappearing in the glassy shimmer of a milky eye. Yet all moments with her have been steeped in the temporary. Serene, translucent fingers triggered the countdown clock long before we ever met. Two indomitable rough edges with meticulously curated sharp lines gave way to sunrise qigong, meditation cave silence, arm-in-arm -arm strolls, 
storytelling marathons, insightful correction, the softness of a gifted handmade Angora hat, synchronous fixed moments in an elastic ribbon of time, stretching and bending just enough to give us all the time we ever needed. Beloved sensei, pushing up the heavens, scooping the sea, soaring through the sheaths separating worlds in the company of siddhas, gods, wearing handmade Angora hats. Um, and for something a little different, this is called Finders Keepers. My friends say she's a keeper and they're right even though they don't know that she's not mine to keep. Oh, she is on my arm and in my bed. She laughs at my jokes. She finds me amusing, but she has staked no claim. Her pink toothbrush is in my bathroom holder, but it sits out of place behind mine, like a distant cousin, as though I have a backup pink toothbrush, however unlikely. She keeps track of time and boundaries, she says that we've only known each other for a minute. I think to remind herself it hasn't been an hour because what would an hour mean to the keeper of the clock? She keeps intimacy and discards expectation. She says she doesn't want to disappoint me, but I think she fears disappointment like someone who's been broken by it. She keeps me wanting her and fucking her and thinking about her and writing about her. She keeps me drenched in her at arm's length. She keeps searching for hard logical evidence to make sense out of inexplicably charmed moments. She says she doesn't know what to believe anymore. I think that she knows, but that she's just forgotten. She keeps leaving me and finding me, but she keeps careful track of me and always knows where I am. She keeps unraveling my secrets. She says that my sharp don't mess with me bravado is undercut by my sweetness but knows that sweetness is not my secret. She says my secret is that I will yield for the right girl. She doesn't say whether she's that girl, but she says she's got my number and I believe her. Oh my God, let's go. Oh, oh, Kate, welcome. Welcome to your new home. Thank you. you know, you're totally screwed now. That means every Saturday night, you got to cancel all, you got to <laughs> tell them, ladies, I'm busy every Saturday night now. I bet the word is right. Um, oh my God. What would an hour mean to the keeper of the clock? I'm, I'm going to do uh, an epigraphic poem to that and um, drenched in her. Oh, Ray, I know Ray Jane felt that line too drenched in her uh absolutely loved it welcome welcome kate i'm so glad to have met you yesterday i'm so glad that you came and and please come back um I there will. are so many things uh happening here at word is right if you go to the facebook page the calendar uh the weekly schedule is up uh is our backdrop and of course ray jane who's up next uh she's amazing she does uh freestyle fridays with ray jane the last friday of the month here at word is right and that which will be this coming Friday uh, is Freestyle Fridays with Ray Jane, and, and she does this amazing workshops. And I, I get so much out of her workshops. I write so many things. Uh, so, yeah, y'all just don't even know. And I do not have anyone else after Ray Jane. So if I missed anyone who would like to read uh, who hasn't read yet, uh, please let me know, and I will squeeze you in. Uh, yes, Rich. I should have uh, just ignored him. That would have made him so crazy. <laughs> that would have made me completely crazy. I was I just going to say, <laughs> I was just going to say, first of all, I'm going to raise a glass to you. And then secondly, sip it. And then say, and I was kind of saying this jokingly earlier. Um, and I know that Nemo will feel this as well. Um, but I, I thought I'd get a kick out of maybe just a brief, maybe just two or three minute Q&A session. Does anyone have any questions about what right, they so here's heard? What we'll do. Here's what we'll do. We're going to finish up the show on the live here. All right. Because we got Ray Jane right now. And like, oh, she's yeah. amazing. Okay. Um, and we'll close down the live and we will do Q&A in the after hours. Uh, so if you're watching, 
your ass needs to be here. <laughs> if you want to converse with the authors and the poets and the spoken word artists and the features for tonight, uh, I think it's only fair. Uh, you, your ass got to be here if you want the bonus stuff. All right. Uh, so let's uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get there. All right, Rich. Uh, all right. But first of all, let's wait. Welcome up, Ray Jane. Uh, uh, she's an incredible person and host. And of course, she hosts the New York and Post Cafe online Thursday nights. You got to hit up New Yo if you've not done so yet. Uh, it's Ray Jane. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity to share with you. I just want to say, Rich and Nemo, all inspiring and gripping. Like, I didn't want to go to the bathroom. You know, I wanted some snacks. I was like, oh, well, you know, so I'm hungry now. But I <laughs> really enjoyed your pieces. And having you back to back was, as I mentioned in the chat, something I didn't know I needed this evening. So thank you uh, for gifting us uh, with your gifts. And Kate, come on, Kate. Kate, you done messed up. Kate, you done messed up. As Marissa said, we hope to see you much, much more. All right, I have one piece. I want to be fair to everyone else uh, with time, and I'll put in the chat all the stuff um, that you can come and find me and share with us with. And I'm going to get right into it. This is a new piece I wrote last night. Um, I'm kind of a conspiracy theorist. <laughs> Sometimes, at least on Saturdays, I guess. So this is entitled Conspiracy Theories. Ask Aladdin who got our assets. Ain't no genie give us these blues, just another iteration of a black rock on our back. Trying to rub us out, just another target for practice. Illusions in magic schools out in the open, rabbit out the hat. More reverence for secrets than the people. Puppets rarely get away with no strings attached. Attacks, deep, subatomically slavery encoded in DNA. Ask Toth, or if you prefer, Hermes. Humidity God slipped the biggest Mickey. Now we all getting fucked while asleep. Lies holding lids closed, burning black books while leaking truth at suspicious times. Side eyes so much we lost sight of the center. Cross-eyed now, blinded by design, doctrines can also be untested vaccines, as if swine don't know to cry before the slaughter. The cold gets clearer the closer we come to ourselves. Dangerous once, an infinite and separated creature returns to one. From nine, ascent is prerequisite to realize even intelligence is artificial. That Christ is already living water in our spine, that the lineage of God is born in the mind that our schools and our songs still worship with hands in pyramids that's what rockefeller that's what made him so nefarious what told the atlanteans to overreach made the white man plagiarize christianity reduce our promised eternity to 20 spins and a century probably whispered so sweet to the Portuguese they could only pay it back in bouquets of bodies. Knowing we energy factories, black gold over mine, black blood made the law maritime. Check the mathematics, it all adds up longitudinally. Though divisive platitudes roam the earth for free, the colored raise their face to the sun, not the one you know, the other one. Await the return of Nibiru, raise frequencies, plan to vibrate into the heavens without ever leaving this body, but only those adept at remembering the story retold by the Sumerians, the giant bones, the set myth Sonian stole and lost and stole fake news is everything they don't want folk to know, like how many times we've already tried to be humans right. How Darwin didn't know Diddley, how many alien eyes have attempted to define the light? Who will be living in the Antarctic when the poles tilt again? Maybe the Nazis will let a sister get a spaceship. The real trip, that's the only lotion in this poem that's actually far-fetched, far too fleshed to be respected, would ask America for a ride, but I'll just wait till the invasion when they make them holographic, 1% done, got us into some out this world shit, the beef is now galactic, planetary spirits getting desperate, channeling hotep kings undoing spelling, flipping acronyms, 
To reveal hidden meaning, let's try CIA, AI, see you connecting constellations again, all views converging through the looking glass. Why slow is fast, and the past is still happening. The future will be presently, as soon as we start asking, who are the real earthlings? Moreover, was there ever such a thing? Thank you. Oh, damn it, let's go! It's Ray Jane. Oh my God. Um, yes, yes. Now you all know what we know. <laughs> She's phenomenal. Uh, y'all, Friday night, the last Friday of the month is Freestyle Fridays with Ray Jane. It is an entire workshop show with her. Like, it doesn't get better than that. <laughs> It does not get better than that. Uh, some one-on-one -on -one time with her. It is such an incredible show. You write, you read, you participate, you just listen, whatever it is your heart desires. Um, it, she, she creates this incredible space and we are honored and so lucky to have her uh, for so long now. And thank you so much, Ray Jane, for being part of this incredible community. And you know, you know, it just came in. Uh, I had ordered these probably like two months ago. Uh, literally, it took so long to get these in. I got word is right ba uh, badges, and I got beanies. Uh, so I, you know, to do to do beanies, and I'll probably do some caps as well. And I'm just putting together. I've been working behind the scenes since uh, really since Christmas on merch for uh, for the team. So uh, I'm excited to send this out to all of you and to begin um, doing that. Uh, in fact, we're we're also going to be making this legit. Uh, we're going to go do an LLC. Uh, and work some grant money to uh, uh, some entrepreneurial grant money to start to get our features paid. So it's a lot of fun. Uh, a lot of things. I mean, they, these are things that have been in the works since last year. Uh, we were considering doing a, an S corp and other things, but I don't know. I don't know if we're there yet. So uh, we'll, we'll figure things out, but I'm very, very excited that we're going to be making these this year uh at word is right so very excited in fact um uh, i've decided to quit my finance job uh, i'm leaving that this year uh to continue with the press um so yeah i mean there's a lot of things that that have happened like serious big moves so if if i can commit to doing this and being here um with all of you i hope that speaks volumes in the amount of belief that i have in what we're doing uh, so thank you all so much. All right, let's go. Uh, we're going to let's let's unmute our mics one, one last time. Let's give a big round of applause to Rich Boucher and Nemo Zoom. I'll put your cash handles one more time in the chat for everyone. And then we'll break for uh, for our after hours. Uh, unmute your mics. Please give it up for our double feature. Rich Boucher and Nemo Zoom. Woohoo. <laughs> hey, I, I also just want to say a quick hello and a quick thank you to Ray Jane because I just got to say that blistering scroll you rocked out. It was like a body scrub on me, like a, like a sonic body scrub in the best of ways. And not only that, but you, you went from scorching and then you ended, you got your toes on the floor jetted with a room temperature moreover. And I've never heard anybody just gut punch with the word moreover the way that you gut punched with the word moreover so right on rich you gotta hear like these poets like i i know you're so busy and stuff and there's so much that we do but y'all like you gotta you gotta come to all the shows everyone is different and they're all so unique and so special all right so we're gonna end the live with a toast uh i do a, a toast uh for my show as the blessing for everyone. And then we will uh, take a short break and we'll go to the after hours. So if you're watching live and you want to get here, you got to come to the Zoom room uh, and you got to log into your Zoom account to access the Zoom room. All right, here we go. Uh, here's to health in your company and one for the lasses. Let's drink and be merry, all of our glasses. Let's drink and be merry, bad thoughts to refrain. For we may or may not ever all be here again. This has been the Word is Right's double feature open mic featuring Rich for Sharon Nemo Sum. I'm your host, Marissa Prada. I wish you all good night. Peace and blessings. Bye. Good night. Thank you. Cheers. <laughs>